What's up everybody? How are we doing today? Today's video, I just want to go have some fun today. So I'm headed down to the river right now and hopefully we can just catch some fish. So I got I got some new tools I want to try out and hopefully they work. But I thought I'd start it right now because there's some mud in front of me and I don't know how deep it is. We're gonna get through that and then we're gonna start fishing. So hopefully we don't get stuck in between here and the river. The river is only right there, but that's some pretty deep mud. So we're gonna get through this. We're gonna go catch some fish. We're gonna get back on the truck and we're gonna head home after we catch multiple fish for you guys. So hopefully that's, that's, that's the goal at least. So let's get through this mud and then let's go catch some fish. Alright guys, well I thought I'd show you what's new to the channel. I actually made a cradle net. These are well known for wild steelhead fishing because you don't want to pull that steelhead on the bank and that fish is still flopping around, knocking its head on rocks and harming it. But with this, it's pretty simple. All you gotta do is lay it on the ground, slide that fish in, and close the net. Once you uh, close the net, that fish calms down drastically. I think it feels like it's protected and it just calms down right away. You can unhook that fish and then let it, the fish swim freely. We want those wild steelhead to run up river and spawn so we have more wild steelhead in the future. It doesn't help when you got bring that fish on land and it's just getting harmed. You don't want to harm those fish. But I've never used these before, so hopefully we catch one fish for you guys and we can see how it works. If you guys have any questions about these, make sure you leave me a comment. I'll show you guys how to build them or if you guys want one, I can always send you guys some out. But like I said, these work pretty well because you can fold it up like this, slide it in your backpack, and you can hike out really easily as well. It's not like those big round nets with the long handles. So I highly recommend these so far, but we'll see if we can catch a fish for you guys, put it in the net and see how it works. All right, well, let's go catch a fish. That's the only way of putting it in the net, so that's it. All right, let's go catch fish. Fish on. Get this guy unhooked and we'll let him go. So I'm just gonna go move down the river a little bit. You have to let the hole sit sometimes after you hook a couple fish. It sometimes triggers another bite after you come back. So I'm gonna head down river. We'll see if we can catch some more fish. I don't know. It might be a little too sunny. The water might be too high, but I'm having a hell of a day already. So we'll head down and we'll see you guys when we catch the next fish. All 
Alright, well I just broke off, so I thought I'd take the chance to show you guys what my setup is today. So my rod of choice is a 9.8 Lama Glass SI. I think it's rated from medium, 8 to 12, but it works well because you can actually feel the bite before your bobber goes down. So that's pretty cool. And Lama Glass out there, it makes some pretty good rods, so I'd highly recommend this rod. Uh, for my reel, I'm using a size 3000. It's a Shimano Stratic CI4 Plus. And with that, I got a 30 pound Power Pro Super Slick. And to my bobber, I'm using a 3 8 ounce Aero Float. And then it goes down to a 3 8 ounce inline weight. You guys probably think that you guys need to match the, the float with the size of your lure and the inline weight. But I like to have the fish take the least amount of pressure, bobber going down, as possible. So as that, I'm going to show you guys what I rigged up, how I caught the first fish. I'm using a, I believe it's an 8 ounce jig head that I poured myself. And then I'm also using a WFO worm. I'm not sure what this is called, but it's blue and pink and white, but it goes well with the white head. So what I do is I slide it on to the shank of the hook probably about an inch or two, it kind of depends on how long your shank is, and then push it through, voila, so it should fit perfectly on your hook like that, and then I'm running 12 pound fluorocarbon, and the river's kind of small today, so I'm probably run like a two to three foot liter. And what I use is the improved clinch knot tie it onto my jig and my inline weight. Make sure when you're using fluorocarbon that you wet your line before you actually cinch down the knot. Because it seems like the knot doesn't hold as well or it gets more brittle than when you're using just monofilament. And then connect that to the inline weight what the knot pull it tight cut the excess off cut the excess off in your tackle box and there you go you got your I think it's a four and a half inch WFO worm to a one eighth ounce jig head to a three eighths ounce inline weight to a three eighths ounce arrow float to your bobber stop to your rod and let's go back in the water and see if we can catch some more fish. Hopefully, I'm using the best stuff. You can even throw scent on the worm. I might throw some scent, but I'm not going to tell you guys what scent I use because that's a secret. So I'm going to get back, packed up, and we're going to head up river and see if we can catch some more fish. Fish on, guys. Oh, fish off. Gosh dang it. All right, guys, well, that's all I got for you this week. I'm hiking back to the truck. It's been a few hours, so I think it's time to go home. I went one for two today, and that, that was pretty good in my opinion, so can't complain. I also got to test out that new net. So that cradle net worked pretty well. That fish swam in, Calm down and I released it unharmed. So that was pretty cool. So comment below and tell me guys what you guys think about those cradle nets because I'd like to know what you guys think. But if you guys like this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, share it out to your friends, and like always, we'll see you next time.